Tiger, you talk a very, very special episode here coming to you from Total yep. Workwear Stadium. Gavin Payne, well, you're a former Tiger. Uh, are you any more proud than you are today? Look, it's a brilliant day for the, for the club, you know, with, with what's going on here this morning um, over the course of the last couple of hours. So we've had a wonderful day and, um, you know, it's a lot of people have put a lot of work into this club over many years and it's, uh, you know, this is the fruit, the, the, the fruit that comes from that. Uh, this, this east, you know, west, north, all that sort of stuff. What is it about the Tigers? Can you put a, a finger on it? What, what brings out the, the, the Tiger Mate, they, Well, they talk about the Bulldogs being the family club. I, I sort of class that a bit okay. like this here as well, yep. you know. Um, and I, I guess every club's the same. You know, you, you come in as a player, uh, as a coach, whatever the case might be, um, you make great friends that are lifelong friends and you can go, as, as John Lang once said, he reckons he can go to every town up and down the coast of Queensland and find someone that would, would put him in a bed for a night if he needed to. So that's the camaraderie that comes with it and I think that's, you know, part of being like a family club here. Mm. Totally Workwear Stadium. Um, the big announcement today obviously is the, uh, the naming of the, the new stand. Yeah, Mr. Des Morris OAM has uh, now Google been it. You're fine. now <laughs> now officially yeah. um, been uh, the grandstand's been named after him, and it's a it's a wonderful honour. Des has devoted pretty much all of his adult life to to this club. Um, obviously, had a bit of a hiccup in a couple of years in the '80s, but uh, you know he's been a great stalwart of of the, of the East Tigers and now the Brisbane Tigers, um, and, and very well deserved. Okay, so you, you caught up with him. The other big news today is obviously the uh, the NRL bid for the uh, 17th fell over, only at the, just on the finishing line, but that hasn't stopped the Tigers from relaunching another campaign. No, correct, and uh, no, no, no official name yet, but uh, they did a, a put their hat in the ring for yep. if and when the uh, NRL goes to the 18th, 19th or 20th teams, as you will as you will hear, and, um, and Brian Torpy, the CEO, talks uh, very passionately about that. Uh, yeah, you, uh, I spoke to Brian, you also spoke to uh, Richard. Yeah, Shane Richardson, he's uh, got many hats uh, in, the, in the, the game of rugby league. Uh, he's back down involved with the Tigers now as well. Also, obviously, um, be doing some consulting, I'm sure, with the, with the 18th team bid as well. But um, just a, a great man and, a, and a, got a great knowledge and experience in the, in the game. Now, they brought out the big gun, Shane Edwards as well. Yeah, look, it was wonderful to see this yeah. afternoon. You know, there was politicians here from the state and local governments um, also, and, and, the, and the federal government as well, um, you know, all supporting the bid. Um, Shane Edwards, obviously, um, uh, heavily involved previously in, in roles at the Broncos um, and comes with that experience of working in an NRL franchise. Um, it's a magnificent team that they've got together and, and I don't know all of them that are, that are actually involved in it. But, you know, um, kudos to, to Brian Torpy as well. He's had the foresight to really to take this bull by the horns and, and really go after it. He's determined to get a, a, a Tigers team into the, uh, into the NRL and um, we wish them very much success in, in that bid. All right, well, here's those interviews. Um, sit back and enjoy Tiger Facebook. Welcome back to Tigers Talk. Um, I'm very, here with a very esteemed guest and club legend of the East Tigers formerly, but now Brisbane Tigers, Mr. Des Morris. Hi, Gav, how are you going? Welcome, mate. Thank you very much for, for joining us for this little chat. Um, Obviously, just had the, the grand opening of this magnificent stadium uh, yeah. grandstand again now, um, and, and you got some honour uh, associated with that as well. Yeah, that was great uh, honour to be you know have the stand named after you. Um, you know, I've, I suppose I've been around for a while, and uh, you know, it's really glad to see the club um, go so well and you know have a facility like this. Well, there's a, the, as you mentioned uh, in in your speech and in the conversation. There was um, there's some some roots have been put down many years ago by some people that were first here when you were here and they established yep. the club obviously you know the Jack Atkins and those sorts of folk and it's obviously continued on through through yourself as yeah. as, as uh, in the roles that you had down here not only playing and coaching but in officialdom as well so I've been had, here for a number of years yeah I've had my, I've had most of them I think I think there's one I missed out on and I can live with that which one <laughs> no, I'm, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure someone told me once so. and um, of course. You mentioned, sorry, Des, um, the, the stand has been named after you, just for clarification. So yep. we're sitting in the Des Morris stand in the media section, um, which is a great honour. It is. Uh, you know, it's great. We've had some great players come through here. And, uh, you know, it's uh, you know, a great honour for me and my family for uh, the club to bestow this honour on us. Yeah, and, and your, your son's played here as well. Yeah, uh, uh, the all, the, all the boys played East Juniors. Uh, um, then uh, Matt played at first grade here, and so did uh, and uh, Luke did as well. Yep. And then I think uh, Matt might have played a few games at Wynnum, and uh, Luke went to Cronulla and had a bit of a shot for it for a little while. And uh, yep. yeah, so we're, we're we are a footy family, and yeah, it's been great. 
And you mentioned some of those uh, older folk that you, you played with, those, I noticed Alan Curry and a few of the yeah. other gentlemen here as well. Well, you know, that's what you, you sort of, you get lifelong friends out of footy, you know, the blokes we've played with. So when I first came down, I came down with uh, Terry Creedy and, uh, and myself. We, we was our first year in 68, but already Jeff Denman was already here and, uh, you know, a few others, Ipswich guys. Yep. Uh, Kevin Murphy, I remember, and uh, City Lewis came down here. And then, um, you know, you, had a, you played with a lot of players as well that come from other clubs, you know, so. But uh, I must say, East, East had a, a very strong junior commitment in those days. Uh, East and East Carina, a lot of the guys that have come through, had come through, when you look back through the history and you see where the number of players have come through, it's amazing. And the development continues to, to today, like there's many junior affiliate clubs that have come through with the Tigers now? Yeah, we've still got, well, we're, we're growing as we, we, as we, as soon as we can, uh, down, uh, down south, I, I suppose, is a bit, uh, I can't think of the name of the place at the moment, yep. but uh, yeah, we've, we've got a couple of junior clubs in the new suburbs, yep. and uh, that's, that's always helpful. Very exciting development, um, Brian Torpy, CEO of the club, uh, came up with again today and that the, uh, they're very interested in obviously bidding again when the 18th t a licence becomes available for the NRL. Yeah, well that's, uh, that's the plan, so hopefully you know, we're, we've got a fair way to go, obviously we're disappointed we missed out last time and uh, it's, uh, you know, we've got a strong base behind us so we think we should be uh, given an opportunity sooner or later and uh, you know, we'll be working from now forward on to uh, the next bid. Yeah, very well. Lastly, Des, um, obviously, other than your involvement, voluntary involvement these days, um, in retirement, how's, uh, how's that going? Yeah, well, it's pretty good, actually. I, I've been retired probably s gets away on you, uh, <laughs> six years, seven years now. Uh, I still have a strong affiliation with the club, through mm. the football club and uh, Leeds club and the Firehawks and uh, things like that. So, you know, there's enough to keep me busy. I don't, I don't go looking for work or anything like that, you know, so, uh, but yeah, Faye and I sort of having a comfortable retirement. Yep. We've got a couple of kids live down the coast. Uh, one lives up the coast and one lives halfway between here and the coast. So, uh, you know, we catch up with them pretty regularly yep. and uh, probably not as regularly as we would like to, but yep. You know, they, they've got their lives to live as well, so. Well, you've got the family and the Tigers are a family as well to exactly. all of us. So we've been yeah. here for a long time, you for, you for a little longer than me, but um, we love the club and we look forward to future success for them. We certainly do, and hopefully uh, this facility here will uh, stand us in good stead when we put it in our new bit. Congratulations again on name, having the stand named after you, Des, and thanks for joining us here on Tigers Talk. Thanks, Kevin. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Exciting times here at the Brisbane Tigers. We are at Totally Workwear Stadium on top of the newly named Des Morris stand. And joining me with this, some exciting news is Shane Edwards. Shane, the Tigers never give up. They miss out on the 17th team, but didn't, that didn't stop you guys. You still got the mongrel to go after that 18th spot. No, I think uh, just the, the past or previous directors... Uh, and uh, their commitment to rugby league has been phenomenal. Like I came in late in the Firehawks bid and saw what a professional organisation it was, but it's all about focus and what they can give back and how we can grow the game. And that was uh, an easy decision for that board to make, to say, yes, we're going for the 18th team. And if we unfortunately miss out on that, we'll be the 19th and 20th. We're not giving up, we're here. And we think we've got a good product to uh, take into the NRL. And it's not all about prestige, is it? You actually want to grow the game in South East Queensland. We have the numbers. You spoke about the population growth. And to expand the game, we need to have this sort of an opportunity in the South East Corner. Yeah, I just think it's missing at the moment. The South East Queensland's certainly underrepresented mm. in the NRL. Uh, that can be seen by the Magic Ground, by the great crowds the Dolphins and the Broncos are having this year, by the television ratings. Yep. So there's so many indicators that show that. And then you've got the population explosion on the Gold Coast, in Logan and Ipswich. You know, within 10 years, there's almost going to be a million people between Logan and Ipswich. And, you know, it's a great rugby league corridor that we should be in. And at the moment, the Lions are basing themselves mm -hmm. out at Springfield and uh, they've got their leagues club down in Springwood. So they've got us... Uh, Covered. So we've got to get out there and work hard to uh, make sure that's retained as rugby league heartland. Yes, it's wrong. And, and, and retain the Firehawks uh, uh, label? 
We haven't said no to that, okay. but we really wanted to emphasise the history and the culture of the club. I think that's one thing that uh, we could have done better in the last bid. Okay. Uh, with the Firehawks, there were some great marketing concepts there, but uh, we, we haven't named it what our team will be if we're successful, uh, but we're known as the Brisbane Tigers 18th team bid, mm -hmm. and that's where we'll be focusing and putting all of our um, thoughts together in ensuring we become that 18th team. Totally work West Stadium, formerly Langlands Park, an iconic place in, in itself. So the Tigers, uh, 90 years, um, and with this new stadium, it gives that extra oomph for you guys to push forward and get that, that 18th, 19th or 20th side, isn't it? It's just you've yes. got this little showcase, beautiful boutique stadium that you can draw upon to draw, draw the, uh, the facilities, yeah. men and women. Again, it was a tremendous decision by the uh, Brisbane Tigers board to, to go ahead and build this. Like It was part of our proposal to say if we were successful in the 17th bid, this is what we would do, and we've gone ahead and done it. We've also created a great community program called Rising, mm. and we're out in the community helping our, our community yep. uh, with the programs we're doing. So, And we've got a, a digital marketing concept uh, that we're going to push forward so that we can relate to our our fans and grow a new base over the coming months before this uh, bid becomes a, a formal process with the NRL. There's no denying your passion, mate, and I guess it's uh, widespread, isn't it? You guys are uh, a collective and you're, you're, you mean business. We come in here and we've just been talking to some of the great legends. You know, Jeff Denman I got introduced to, um, Alan Curry. You know, yeah. they're, they're the faces that I grew up watching rugby league and, and, and looking at. And then you've got John Lang and Des Morris. You know, two all-time greats, and it was lovely that uh, Des got recognised today. And uh, I, I just like being around those people because they're here for football. Mm. Uh, I've been involved with other businesses where it's corporate strategy. Here they're saying, how can we make football better by using the Brisbane Tigers as that process to go through. Can I be can we fair to say that rugby league is needed? We saw it in the COVID where the NRL made games available to get us through a crisis. I think for young people these days, we need to keep expanding the game of rugby league so we can get players out and about, becoming socially mindful, uh, sharing each other's experiences, girls or boys. And I think if you can create that opportunity in a corridor and a brand new brand or a new uh, concept, that brings more players out and, uh, yeah. and across code as well. well. It makes it a stronger competition and it brings more people into yep. the game to draw it so that we can bring in 18, 19 and 20 teams. Mm. So I think the great thing about our bid, we've talked in terms of the football side of it, but we're working the community very well yep. with our rising program and it's really going to help people because it's not only just about rugby league people, but it's people out there that are struggling and how uh, we can make it a better place to live in through rugby league. Jamie Edwards, look, it's been a pleasure. I uh, can't deny your passion and fingers crossed you guys won't leave anything stone unturned and I, uh, I think uh, look out. The 18th side um, is certainly well within reach of you guys and congratulations on your, uh, your um, uh, proposal. Thank you very much. Cheers. CEO Brian Torpy, we are at Totally Workwear Stadium. Big day for the club, Brian. It just seems to be coming in leaps and bounds what's happening here at uh, Tiger, Tiger Land, but uh, big day today. Fantastic day today. We're very pleased to uh, to open the new Totally Workwear Stadium. So, ten years in the planning, mm. uh, lots of uh, designs and redesigns and costings, uh, but we finally built it and we're we're here, um, which has been a great day for the club. Uh, Ninety years ago, uh, the uh, Brisbane Tigers or East Tigers back then formed. Uh, back then. Wow, what a transformation. We talk about Des Morris, uh, we'll talk about that shortly, but how it's transformed over the years. You can't just have a stadium or a ground and just leave it and just go along as it is. You've got to keep developing and making it better for your fans. Well, I think that's progression, isn't it? Yep. So at the end of the day, you want better facilities for your players, for your sponsors, for your mm. fans. Um, and I think we've delivered that. I think we've got a great stadium here. I'm very proud of what we've created. Mm. Talking about the stand, the change rooms, it also accommodating male and female. We know how big the female game is growing. You guys have brought that into your uh, architectural designs. Yep, so we introduced the women's team in uh, 2017 and we're a big supporter of the women's game. We think um, they have the opportunity to do what the men do. Uh, so what we've done is created female compliant um, change rooms, um, which makes it much more comfortable for the women to come and train and play here. So. Uh, we want to encourage more females to play, so we've also get our younger girls to playing yep. here, under 16s, under 18 girls get to play at the stadium. Uh, so we're trying to encourage them to come play football. And we've had a really big explosion, even our junior clubs with girls wanting to play rugby league. Right. 
Today we uh, named the uh, the grandstand the Des, uh, Des Morris stand. No brainer, wasn't it? Really? No, no, he's Mr. He's Mr. Tiger, isn't yeah. he? So, no, it's a great tribute to Des. Like, he's uh, he's given 40 years of his life to the club. Um, he's done it all. Um, it really, wasn't an, any other option. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, a lot of people sort of actually uh, have um, mimicked or, 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 or drawn upon the experience of uh, Des Morris. I can see his interview today, and Wayne Bennett matches it perfectly. It's just uh, you don't get much, but what you do, you get quality. Yeah, exactly. No, Des is very. Um, he's very proud man, but he's very um, um, modest. Mm. So uh, for what he's done in the game, uh, he's a very modest man. So. Uh, people would like to thank, uh, to get this thing together, build it. Uh, well, obviously we had a lot of rain, we had COVID and all these sort of things, but finally it's been finished, but there must have been a lot of people, who, well, there's a lot of people you want to thank, but who in particular? Any of the, 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 oh, uh, the pencil lots, pushers? There's lots of people. I'll start with our town planners yep. who had to get us through council, and our architects who uh, did a fantastic job yep. designing it. Uh, IQ Construct, the principal contractors, uh, I'd like to thank them and their staff and their subcontractors because uh, it's not me out there putting uh, bricks and mortar together. Uh, so those guys have built it and I thank them. But I'd also like to thank uh, the state government, yep. uh, the Palaszczuk government who contributed $1.1 million towards the project. Uh, and um, of course, I'd like to thank the board because without them agreeing to move along this vision, we'd never build it. Leagues Club? Oh, Leagues Club, fantastic. Mm. fantastic. Fantastic. They've been great supporters of the football club. Uh, we couldn't do it without it. And, you know, I was saying in my speech today um, that... Um, our forefathers, basically, yeah. who planted the tree that we're going to sit under the shade now. Yeah. Um, if they could see what we've created, they'd, uh, they'd be very happy at the moment. Well, listen, congratulations. Uh, big news, just, just before I let you go, Brian, um, we've got some NRLW games being played here uh, uh, to highlight uh, what, what these facilities yeah. can bring, the boutique stadium, we like to call it. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that. So, yeah, we've got the round four and yeah. round six. So the Brisbane Broncos will play here in both those days, but on the round four is a doubleheader. So uh, two games here, and we're looking forward to hosting that. Um, we think we'll have a fantastic crowd. It'll be, it's a great place to watch football. You're right, right over the top eh? of the action. You're very close. Great atmosphere. Like, it's going to really be good. Corporate opportunities are available now, I'm guessing, Brian. Yes, they are. Early, get in there nice and quickly. Yep. Get your tickets. I'm not sure whether they're online. But get down here if you can't. Check out the, uh, the obviously the Host Plus Cup, the, the Hastings Zero and Colts, and, uh, and come down and have a great experience here at Totally Workwear Stadium and the Des Morris stand. Brian, congratulations Absolutely. to you and your Thank board. You. Um, and obviously with the NRL bid, um, you guys just get up off the campus every time, don't you? Yeah. Typical Tiger. Well, that's, you know, you get knocked down, you get back up, and that's what we want to do. So we're, we're committed yep. to wanting to go in the NRL. And I think we've taken a massive step by um, coming through on what we said we would do. Yep. We're building this uh, high performance centre and we're starting our rising programs out in our community mm. programs. And as um, a shame what I touched on yep. as well, getting in with that media and marketing. You just don't take no, do you, for an answer? No. <laughs> 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 Brian, talk to you here. Congratulations on a great day here at Tigerland. Thank you. Joined by Shane Richardson. Richo, we've been down here, you've been down here many times over many years. You've worn many hats over the, over the years, but you're back to where it basically all began. Yeah, yeah, I have, mate. It's, it's, a, it, it, it's a strange club, East, and how long I've been involved with them, from right through from coaching, through to administration, etc. But it's, uh, um, it's always been a really well-run club, and, you know, it taught me a lot about running a professional organisation properly because really there's no difference between running East and running Cronulla or Penrith or South and uh, the same principles were involved. The only difference is you've always got the emotion of football, you know? Yeah, and, and obviously it was a good grounding for you then to, to continue on in your career um, in those senior roles down in, down in New South Wales? Yeah, it did. People forget what we were like in the late 80s. I mean, the Brisbane Broncos had come in, our crowds had crashed, we were on the bottom of the ladder. I was a reserve grade coach and yeah. I was the champion coach of the season. We won one, two games, we beat Ipswich twice <laughs> um, to make so we didn't win the wooden spoon. Um, so we, and then, I, then we obviously we were financially struggling when they're going to bring the poke machines in. There was an argument about whether we bought them in or not, which was ludicrous. But um, so um, at the end of the day, we had a, an AGM and I got voted in, and and uh, we got poker machines and have a look at the magnificent league clubs. And not because of Shane Richardson, but because of the the want of the uh, of the administration and and the way it's run. So it was yeah, it was, it was they were healthy on days, and then we went on to bring the great Des Morris back from Wynnum. That was about, about talking to Faye about it, actually, more than theirs, so she wasn't keen for him to come back up what they did to him. Um, and then he took over as coach, and then, uh, and then we put Leggy in. Of course, yeah. you were a major part of all that rattle, so uh, it was a great, there was a great period of time, and we thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, it was the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, yeah. and that we, we, yeah. we had a lot of success down yeah. there. Um, Richo, you mentioned um, 
you know, back here, we're here celebrating the opening of this magnificent facility. It's come a long way over the years. Yeah, it has. It has. But we've always never been a club that spent money when we didn't have it. And some of the great clubs that I knew growing up, like, you know, the mighty Leprechaun Brothers and Fortitude Valley, which was my original club when I was a kid. You know, I can still sing the, uh, the, the, the song about Newman Oval. But the bottom line was, though, that they spent more than they got and we never did. So we always only spent what we had. We never had major loans and it was a really well-run club, which they alluded to today. But going forward, the foresight of this current board and, 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 and Brian and his team have you know, got us to this magnificent stage today where there is no doubt, and I've travelled the whole of Australia and been to every ground in rugby league, the most beautiful ground in rugby league is the Clovelly uh, crocodiles, but that's because of where it is. The best ground in rugby league by a mile is eastern suburbs. And, you know, he didn't get enough mentions today, but you and I both were involved with the, the mighty um, Macca. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, you know, what he's done here is quite amazing. Yep. And uh, and to think he's come from, you know, playing for eastern first grade grand finals to, to being the groundsman here, that, that gives you the idea of the tradition of the club and, and how we always take care of our own. So... Uh, it's, a, it's a great tribute to everybody in the club that we're here today. And yeah. it is, no doubt, the best ground in Australia, and outside of professional clubs, and it's better than most of the professional clubs. Yeah, I, here, here, I agree one wholeheartedly. Uh, you mentioned in the, in the course there of the, the honour that's been bestowed on Des. He's been here for many years, obviously the, the great honour of no, naming the grandstand uh, after Des Morris, OAM, um, is, a, is a fitting tribute for his uh, involvement here at the club over many decades. Yeah, look, <laughs> he's a top tiger. That's the bottom line, yeah. isn't he? He's always been a top tiger. He's got a little cub around, running around him all the time called John Lang. But he's the top tiger. And at the end of the day, you know, Des gives everything he's got to rugby league and it always has done, probably more than he should have in some ways, and, um, you know, from a business point of view, et cetera, et cetera. But the one thing about Des is, it, because he's the man he is, he just makes everybody a friend as well. You wouldn't want to cross him. and you know, I've got a few players I can name be knocked out in toilets who wouldn't want to cross him. <laughs> but at the end of the day, he's a man of principle and he's honest and he's loyal. And there's, you know, in this day and age of the game, they're very few and far between. Our great 83 side, a uh, great uh, 90, 92 side, 91, 92, 93, you, know, you guys are still mates today because they had quality yeah. human beings like Tricky Dowden and Ian Staines and yourself and even Bruce Crosby. But the bottom line about it is, is that there's this camaraderie within this club that lasts for long, long, longer. And when I, we came back this year, I came back to get involved with the on the football side about trying to you know, make sure we can win some premierships. It's right about nine and thirty years, but what you failed to say is we won one. Yeah. And there was a coach there that got the grand final never won. Was it you there? Uh, a couple. Yeah. Um, but but, but yeah, you know, you've got to you've got to be you've got to get to them to win them. You can't win them without getting to them. My point about it is, though, is that you know, you've got to be ruthless to win premierships. With be, and Red Cliff have been ruthless for years and years. It's yeah. made them, it's why it's made them the most unpopular Queen's and Rugby League club in the comp. Yeah. By far. Unpopular press. Unpo but they were ruthless, they were successful and they won. We are the nicest people in the world, which is great, but if you want to win, You've got to be ruthless, and that's what we're going. We're going to have real claw in our in our paw as tigers, and and you know I th I think we may not win it this year, but we'll push it hard. But in the years to come, we'll be right up there with the best. And the squad this year, just going on to current times, is uh, is is going quite well in the in the competition. You had a little bit to do with some input into the development of that squad. Yeah, look, we cleaned out eighty percent of the players. That's the bottom line. We've got twenty percent of the players only left. Yep. I mean, you 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 got to you got to you got to have a winning mentality. You know, I, I see. You know, it's quite funny, you know, you see a bloke like Bennett King and uh, you look at him and, uh, and you go, uh, you know, he's a crazy wild man with a hair. And, yeah. Mate, no one is more passionate about winning. He's sick to death of not winning something. Yeah. He's only got, he's 34 years old. He ain't going to be around for 100 years like you, Rattles. Yeah. At the end of the day, he's going to, he got to win one. And, mate, you need people like him. So you've got a leadership group of him, a leadership group of the, um, the, from, from the North Second Row. I'm just flip my mind at the moment. The Polynesian Second Row. He's a oh, really good yeah, player. Yeah. Uh, we bought in the, the Pulu. full, yeah, Pulu. Yeah. We bought in the fullback, who's just a, a winner and a junior, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And Riley Jack. So they're the four, but under that, if that, there's this huge group of young blokes who just doesn't know what it's like to lose and want to win. And, and they know that by winning, they can reward Riley Jacks and, 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 and that blue and these guys. And at the same time, they reward themselves. Because yep. as you know, when we won the, won, the, won the grand final in 92, half the team disappeared to Sydney clubs. Yep. We hadn't made that grand final, mate. 
they wouldn't have disappeared. Yeah. So I, I just think it's a good formula. I love the club. We've got magnificent facilities. No reason why we can't be successful. And we are the best club in the game, rugby league outside of the NRL. And we're better than 10 of the 16 clubs in the NRL. Richo, your passion for the game is unrivaled. Um, it's been great talking to you here this afternoon, mate. Um, continue on with the good work. Uh, all the best in the future, and um, we'll catch up for a beer. Excellent, buddy. I'll love a beer. We'll be in for that. Don't anyway. bring Stainsy, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's a grog monster. <laughs> <laughs> Just stay here for a second. Oh, we're going to stay here. You might recognise this gentleman to my left. It's none other than Peter Basolis. Peter, uh, great day here at... The Brisbane Tigers, formerly East Tigers, yep. formerly Langland Stadium, now it's totally Workwest Stadium. You must have been chuffed to be uh, involved in today's proceedings. Mate. Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, on many fronts, John, uh, and uh, thanks for having us here this afternoon. Uh, you know what? what? One of the things uh, about today, all about, is recognising the history of this great club and then seeing how it's taken that history, harnessed it, and then bringing it into the into the future, and, and if that future is being the, the 18th team in the NRL, then, then that would be great. Uh, but I just think it, it is, uh, this facility here is what the club deserves, and the fact that it's named after an absolute legend, not just of uh, the, the East Tigers, now Brisbane Tigers, but uh, a legend of the game here in in Queensland than uh, in Des Morris. I think that's that's really well deserved. We're not going to try and reveal how old you are, Solly, but you mentioned in your speech out here as the MC back in the day when you were younger how completely changed and what has transformed into hey, today. John, I, I grew up in Tarragindi. Yep. So I used to ride my bike here uh, and then the ground was I said 20 metres but Des corrected me, it's 40 <laughs> metres back that way and about 4 metres higher uh, and uh, now the, the where most people enter the, the club from these days, that's where the bar was. Uh, and, um, you know, so we, Dad and his mates would be up the top in the bar and we'd go down in the, uh, on the, basically on the, the touch line and just uh, give the, the touch judge enough room to, to run past. That's how close we were to, to watching. And you know what? You'd remember Happy Jack. Yes. So yes. Happy Jack lost his hat one day. I can't say that me and my mates were responsible for it. It was East V Valley's uh, here, and, and the next time I saw Happy Jack, he was wearing a different hat, and I felt a little bit bad for him. This is a cold case that's just been solved now. <laughs> uh, for many, many years, we've got a culprit to our level of anybody. <laughs> but uh, Des Morris, you talk about uh, legends, and when you say Des Morris, you, and he's OAM, but Des Morris is rugby league. He is, uh, he, he really is, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a player, a coach, yep. a captain coach, premiership winning captain coach. Uh, selector for Queensland, selector for Australia. Uh, and uh, I know he's been a real sounding board as well too for a lot of very influential people in the game for, for a long time. No matter who you talk to in the game, John, you know this, you know him very well uh, as well. Mate, people, have, people hold Des Morris with the utmost respect and that's what he deserves. He's been a great servant of the game for, for such a long time. Uh, I think, still think, yeah, and, and I go by what people used to say and from vision that I've seen, being someone in my 40s, I, I didn't see Des play, but uh, he's still got to be the, the best player never to have played for Australia. Most certainly. Now, with, uh, with the uh, NRL bid today, we won't talk about that too much here, but yeah. they, they, they get there on the canvas, the Tigers, they get back up, they don't take no for an answer, and they've come back hard and punched, and they want the 18th, 19th, whatever license it is. Uh, it just speaks volumes for the club. Yeah, it does. Uh, I think that um, it, it makes sense. First and foremost, it makes sense for Brisbane to have another NRL team. Uh, I was kind of hoping when they were going from 16 to 17, in the back of my mind, I, I, was, uh, I was hoping that the NRL would come out and say, yes to the Dolphins, yes to the Firehawks, you're both in, we're going from yeah. 16 to 18. Mm. Now I think they've got an opportunity to do that. And, and what I'm liking looking from the outside in to, to, to what the club is doing, is that they're doing everything that the NRL has asked mm. of them from that original bid. That, in my mind, puts them further ahead. Look, at the risk of upsetting a few people, you know, good luck to the North Sydney Bears, but do we need another team down there? No. No, we, 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 we don't. And I don't think it would work either if they belong uh, to a bid, say, with, uh, with Perth. I, I don't think no. that would... That would work. I think this bid is, makes a lot of sense. Look, ratings are up, crowds are up. 
if, if Brisbane with, what are we at now? Three and a half, four million people? Two. In, 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 and around, <laughs> yeah, yeah. in and around South East Queensland. Can't, if South East Queensland can't handle four NRL teams, then I don't know. Because uh, the Titans, they, I think, are on the right track because they're attracting a lot of juniors through northern New South Wales and, and on the Gold Coast as well. The Dolphins, they've got their area and, and north into CQ. The Broncos are the Broncos. They're always going to be a powerhouse. And we have got the people to sustain another team. Let's talk about it just quickly. The Clydesdales are coming to the Host Plus comp competition, so that's in Toowoomba. The Brisbane Tigers are focusing on that Western Corridor. It's the, the Langer, the, all that territory there from Logan all the way up to Toowoomba. There's a nursery of players there that are yep. actually just dying to play NRL. And that's just... Just a breeding ground for rugby league, and it's a, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I, I think it is too. We're, and let's not forget those towns on the other side of uh, of the downs as well, like your Dolbys, etc. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's plenty of talent that's come uh, come through there. So, mate, I think it's a no-brainer that we can have another team, and long may it be the Tigers. All right, Peter Solis, um, thanks for your time, mate, on uh, Tigers Talk, and uh, look, all the best. Uh, congratulations on. Uh, with the NRL calling the games, mate, always a pleasure to listen to you uh, bringing us uh, the live action every week. And one day you might be calling the, the Firehawks playing uh, the Storm or something like that one. Well, let's, uh, let, let, let's hope so. So, and, and well done to what uh, you uh, and, uh, and Payne does as well too. Uh, John, it's absolutely fantastic. And all the team here at Tiger uh, TV has been absolutely sensational. Mate, it's hard work with Payne, let me tell you. I'm not, he, I'm not getting paid. He, he, he says he says the opposite. He, he says. <laughs> wow, we off, off camera. We're talking AI hey, right now. Sully, thanks for your time, mate. <laughs> Thank you. How can they say no, Gav? How can the NRL say no to the 18th side coming from here, Totally Work West? Unfortunately, they said it for the 17th, but there's a very strong case being mounted yep. for the Tigers to be the 18th team, if and when that bid comes around. All right. Well, thank you for your time today. We actually have a very special guest. He's the NRL. Uh, commentator and a passionate Tiger supporter, and that is Peter Pasolta, so my bucket list to actually interview uh, uh, Solti. So uh, here's what Solti thought on the whole uh, idea of uh, the, the Tigers joining the competition. They're going to put a few noses out of joint, but that's the way it goes. But thanks for talking to us on, uh, watching us on Tiger Talk. We'll be back next week talking about the Host Plus Cup and the uh, Hastings Earrings Colts. Uh, I'll let you go back to selling Bibles. That's why Gav was dressed like this. He's going to be knocking on your door with the watchtower. You can't say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week. Bye.